We're here, we made it, it is springtime 2024. Thought this winter would never end, don't speak too soon. Anyway, out riding, I've just been thinking about group sets and this is gonna be a bit of an open letter to group set manufacturers. You see, as I was riding up this hill, it just got me thinking that we have seen all the major releases from all the major brands, you know, Dura, Soltegra, 105, all launched, showing their cards. Most of the SRAM range is launched. We've seen Apex, etc. now pick up electronic shifting. Even Campagnolo have reluctantly, eventually brought out some sort of wireless shifting and caught up with the rest of them. And we're even seeing the Chinese brands. So it's about time that we restart that cycle. And we're already starting to see the SRAM Red rumors. It's normally SRAM Red that kicks off the cycle and it got me thinking that do you know what I really don't want to see another year of it's 13 speed we've added one more cog oh it's lighter but what would I rather see instead let's get into it Lols. now I think this next generation of group sets is going to be really interesting because electronic and hydraulic is now a mature market now i am pretty certain that we're going to see the end of mechanical shifting and possibly even mechanical braking as well the electronic and hydraulic is so widely accepted and demanded now that it really doesn't make any sense in developing that product anymore in fact we had the sram rep come around and visit the shop and was trying to flog a whole load of mechanical shifting stuff at a cheap price and it was still more expensive than what they're selling the electronic stuff for so it was it was almost a bit of a joke to be honest now the other thing that makes me think this is that we are now becoming more and more dependent and comfortable with having electronic devices outdoors cameras phones etc garmins and they're proven to be very reliable i don't think anyone's really had a massive mishap with their electronic shifting any more so than they would do with mechanical shifting you know once your ratchet's broken it's broken it's irrelevant whether you have a spare shift cable or not The winter has not been kind to that track, but it has made it a whole lot more fun. Now, one more thing about electronic group sets is a whole bunch of stuff is happening. Now, the industry, as you know, has been in decline by quite a lot, which means that the pressure is gonna be on with these brands to innovate, but also to try and consolidate, try not to have so many skews and parts and bits. Like if you look at the current DI2 stuff, how many different types of cables and junctions there still are, whereas SRAM, universal battery, etc. Also, that European legislation, right to repair, universal charge cables, all that sort of thing, it's all gonna come into play with this next generation of group sets. So, what features would I really like to see? The first thing I'd love all the brands to change is sort out the general ergonomics of their shifters. You see, with electronic shifters, I don't see why we have to be constrained with you know, trying to replicate the sort of the sound and the feel of mechanical shifting. We can put these buttons anywhere we want. I don't think it's best served in these buttoned area that they have now, the Campagnolo trying to recreate. It's all very romantic, but I don't think it's practical. Why would you do that? Especially having a lever here where it's just always in the way. This is all very nice. I quite like this, but any gravel rider will know when you're descending, this is great when you've got three fingers wrapped around the bar and you can brake like this and you can shift, but every now and then you want a bit of gravel and you're up here and you want to do some braking and this gets in the way especially if you've got short hands or if you like to run your brakes with any sort of modulation now i don't see why it has to be like that and also i'd love to see if we had even more control and adjustability around where we want our brakes so we have you know the lever throw just how we want it you know the bite point just where we want it you know the reach adjust just where we want it at the moment i still think those controls are a little bit arbitrary they don't really work that well and i'd love to see if we had like buttons here potentially so that we could just shift in a variety of different positions or have control of our garments a bit like the grx does on the uh, on the shimano system and also having some sort of shift in here when you're on the top would be fantastic not like we've seen now with those wireless blips that we've now have to get aftermarket bits to make them all look nice but i don't see any reason why that can't be almost invisible just hidden under the bar tape like while I'm at it, one thing I'd love to change is just the whole transition from like hard plastic and onto the bars and where the bar tape uh, sits. You know, I don't see any reason why we need to have hard edges around here at all. I think this can really, really be improved massively. Right, on we go. Next gripe then, if we are gonna have lots of integrated cables that go through the headset and stuff, um, don't take the piss out of me of having all these headset stacks. The frame is way too small for me. It is what it is. 
um, I think we need a much better way of disconnecting and reconnecting brake hoses again that don't demand a whole new cable being run. In fact, <laughs> here's a bit of banter for the comment. Now, I got into a bit of a hoo-ha with a journalist who was whinging about, you know, routing cables through the headset like this. And I made the argument that if you're going to be doing a full strip down rebuild service of your bike, I don't think it's any more difficult to route the cable through your headset than it would be if they were external. Now, yes, if you were just going to service your headset completely independently of doing any other work, this is definitely a lot more difficult. But if you were already moving the bar tape to change your shift cables and your brake cables, then I don't think this is any more difficult because you'd also have the headset out anyway, running a brake cable all the way through your frame internally and out the other side, bleeding it, I think doesn't take any more time. But anyway, tell me I'm wrong down in the comments. I'm sure you will. Okay, rear mech. I think it is time to make the rear mech beautiful again. You remember the days when, was it the Dura A7800? I can't even remember the numbers. It actually looked really, really stunning. It's just a beautiful thing to hold in your hand and look at. It's like all polished and lovely. I want those days back. I think the rear mech should be like a real highlight of your bike. Like really shout about it. And I think electronic group sets, none of them look good. They all look like they're big clunky things with chunks of plastic where the mechanism or the battery sits. Um, I think it's time now that we can miniaturise all those electronics and make the rear mech look beautiful and sleek and elegant again. The other thing I'd love it, the rear mech to do, and even the front mech actually, is it's about time that we really got on top of the sort of the vibration sensing. You know, when you haven't got a gear that's just quite right, for whatever reason, they'll work perfectly. Then one day you just go out for a ride and just one gear that's just not quite aligned, you sort of micro shift out. I think. No, we should have the technology now that that should just be automatic, that your rear mech and your front mech automatically senses that you're a little bit out of alignment and it automatically shifts it into the perfect alignment. It can't be that difficult. Perhaps even a warning sign that says, oh, we think your rear hanger is bent or maybe your cage is bent because something's not quite right. Stop riding, go and check it out before you do some damage. That must be a feature that's relatively easy to implement. The other thing I'd really like to see is on the battery. So you know when you're on surround batteries, oh, <laughs> drop it in the mud, there we go. Like, I love the fact that all these are, you know, fairly standard across all the ranges now and they haven't really changed it, but it can't be that hard to put a little USB cable in there now and just charge it directly off a USB-C cable. I mean, that would just be the dreams. Um, so many sort of camera batteries and things like that are doing that now. Just like a little USB-C charging port directly on the battery. Come on, you can do it. That'd be awesome. By the way, this ratio technology cage thing is going well so far. By the way, if anyone's wondering where I am, this is the, uh, the Lon Sleddle Valley. We've just ridden down this sort of, it's a mountain bike track really. Although actually it's technically a byway, believe it or not, unsuitable for motor vehicles. You can actually drive a four x four up here. I think what I most like about gravel biking is that you can take ridiculously lightweight bikes like this <laughs> down stupid shit like this. <laughs> to finish this video up then, we have to mention gear ratios because that's how it all started. Do we really need 13, 14 speeds on our really cassette? Now, I think we've probably got all the gears that we possibly need. The equivalent of a 5211 as our high gear, right there up to something less than a one-to-one -one ratio on our climbing gear, if we really want it. What I would like to see is it making it easier to change gear ratios if we want to. So if we do want a nice lightweight climbing gear, if we're going to do something like Fred Witten Challenge or go and do a big Alpine holiday or something where we perhaps don't need the big 52, or even if we're doing one by stuff with gravel riding especially where most of the time I'm happy with my 40, 42 setup but if I'm going to do some bike packing and I'm loading this up with loads of bike bags I want to switch that down to a 38 or something because I'm going to be carrying more weight and I just don't need the high gear so the ability to change chain rings I think would especially interest me in the next generation of at least gravel group sets. And then finally the last thing I'd really love to see and this goes for nearly every single group set, is just a tightening up of the quality. Like anything that sort of shifts and wobbles or vibrates, I'd love it if the general build quality was just 
better across everything Dura Ace. Probably only Campagnolo is the exception, but even then they've got a few things where just every now and then, especially when things start to wear out, things start to rattle like jockey wheels or brake levers or you know the pivots on your front mech just start to wear out. I think we can definitely build some more durability, especially into the top tier group sets. That would be really, really nice just to have a completely perfectly silent group set. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Okay, I think that's it. I think that's my wish list complete. What's on your wish list? Get down in the comments, let me know. If you like this sort of content, then you're going to love the next video coming up where we do a complete teardown of Campagnolo Super Record. Um, we spent about a week filming it. It's been really interesting. Anyway, hit that subscribe button and you'll be the first to be notified when that video comes out. Okay, see you on the next one.